minute, just a minute, just a minute. <laughs> Don't you worry. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Now look, Lily's here, and uh, she's desperate to tell you all something, whether Steph likes it or not. So hang on, let me take this off here. It's good to know that, uh, that being a big sister is less important than the two twin teddy bears, so it's that's nice to know. But congratulations, <laughs> Steph. <laughs> Let's start with a prayer. And as well, um, I have some marbles. Do you? What's that? Um, um, and I can tell her what the other one is. She's off to her birthday party at uh, Fun Forest straight after church. And Graham's, and Graham's too old to go. And after Easter, I was sick. There we go. And I am six. You are six, right. <laughs> There's a lot of excitement around this morning. <laughs> so, let's start with a prayer. Dear Father, quiet our minds, still our hearts, for your living ways are what all we seek. Strengthen our lives, inspire our spirits, in your living waters flow endless grace. Amen. Amen. Uh, couple of notices. Poppins back on tomorrow uh, after the bank holiday. Tonight, 7 o'clock, Broughton. It's the bass service, so contemporary music and uh, a laid-back service at Broughton Church at 7 o'clock. Um, and today, with it being 23rd of April yesterday, I thought we'd have a vaguely St George feel to it this morning. But let's start with a, with a song, and we'll start with 10,000 Reasons. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. 
Please sit down. PowerPoint. Right there. No. no, no, it's going backwards and forwards. Sorry, I'm no, sorry. sorry. He's there. There we go. Jesus promised that he is present whenever people meet in his name. So let us greet one another as members of God's family. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. We, lift them to the Lord. we have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanks, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins and to seek his grace that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Amen. O Lord, our Lord, your greatness is seen in all the world. Your praise reaches up to the heavens. Before the mountains were made, or before you had even formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. The Lord our God is worthy to receive glory and honor and power, for he has created and redeemed us. Hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Therefore, let us seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus, the Saviour of the world. So let us in silence remember our own faults and failings. Heavenly Father, we are very sorry for all the things we have done and said and thought that have been wrong. We are sorry that we have thought of ourselves and not of others. We are sorry that we have done what we wanted instead of what you wanted us to do. We ask you to forgive us and to help us to be the people you would like us to be. We ask this for Jesus Christ's sake. May Almighty God forgive us, help us to follow Jesus' way of life and guide us with his Holy Spirit. And the collect for today, the second Sunday of Easter. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness 
that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And a collect for St. George's Day. God of hosts, who so kindled the flame of love in the heart of your servant, George, that he bore witness to the risen Lord by his life and by his death, give us the same faith and power of love that we who rejoice in his triumphs may come to share with him the fullness of the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let's stand to sing our second song, I, the Lord of Sea and Sky. reading is from Timothy and Linda's going to share that with us. The 
first reading is 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2 verses 3 to 13. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown, except by competing according to the rules. The hard-working farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all of this. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel, for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Here is a trustworthy saying, If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful for he cannot disown himself. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from St John's Gospel. The world hates the disciples. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. This is the word of the Lord. <coughs> Most of what I'm going to say today has been uh, harvested from three different articles. So where one stops and where one starts and it's all been mixed and matched. So see if you can piece it together. It was St George's Day yesterday. Um, so being English, we all had street parties and street parades and things. But, uh, so what do we know about St George? What does anybody know about St George? Uh, he was certainly Middle Eastern, yeah, he, he, and he, he, they reckon he died in Palestine, um, but certainly from that neck of the woods, yeah. Anything else we know? He killed a dragon. <laughs> yeah. We'll go, start with that, yeah. So, St George, patron saint of England, um, but he's not English, um, and he died in Palestine. Uh, and he might have been a soldier, he might not have been. Uh, and the thing he's most famous for wasn't true. So he was, uh, the most thing he's most famous for, killing a dragon, is just a myth. Uh, a myth that uh, came about five, six, seven hundred years after his death. It was the 1200s before he was linked to killing dragons. Um, it was Richard III. No, it wasn't. It was Edward III uh, who, uh, who, who first adopted St George as the uh, patron saint of England. Um, Edward III, uh, I'm, I'm assured that uh, in later centuries became uh, seen, came to be seen as like the model of the medieval king. Uh, he sort of symbolised what was both great in kingship and national pride. And then after the ba Battle of Agincourt, um, no, well, no, no, no anti-French comments this morning, after the Battle of Agincourt, the Saints' Day, 23rd of April, became a feast, a national holiday, 
and it, was, and it remained so for several hundred years. And it's only in the last couple of centuries uh, that as the English nation became part of the United Kingdom, it became part of the British Empire, that St. George's, uh, the St. George celebrations seem to d diminish. And we're now left with the f just St. George's flag is probably the uh, bigger symbol of England than St. George himself. So, again, we said, said earlier that we don't make much of a fuss of St. George. It, it seems to be, uh, uh, I think, watching our neighbouring countries uh, making a fuss of their, their saints' days. I think uh, the English are starting to follow suit. Um, I'm proud to say that the uniformed organisations still uh, have always celebrated St. George's Day. We will, have, uh, we will have about 600 people at the campsite next weekend, uh, a week late, but celebrating St. George's Day. Um, and it's all been really focused in the popular imagination of about dragon slaying explo exploits. The real hero he defeats evil, uh, but there's more to him than this legend. The real St. George, um, uh, he was a real man who did real things. But as ever, with saints of early, uh, early Christianity, there isn't that much detail. We believe he was from Palestine. We believe he was probably a conscript in the Roman army. But he also believed he decided to stand up against the persecution of Christians. And this is all happening in about the 4th century. Be and, he was, and he stood up against the persecution of Christians because he was so disgusted by the barbaric methods employed by the Roman Empire. He had been impressed by the faith of those who died believing in Jesus, that he became a Christian himself, even though that he knew that would mean his certain death. He was imprisoned himself, he was tortured, and he was killed for his beliefs. And in a place near Tel Aviv in Lod, in Israel, the St. George's Church is supposed to be the resting place of his body. And St. George is highly regarded, not just by uh, uh, Christians, but by Muslims and, and by Jews. And among the Palestinian Christians, St. George is also associated with the protector of the home, a healer, and somebody who stood up against the misuse of power. So perhaps it's very, uh, it's, perhaps in the current climate, it's very uh, apt that we, we, we think about St. George now. But the most famous uh, legend of St. George is him slaying a dragon. But we said it only became popular hundreds of years after his death. And but part of it is because it was common to use dragons in stories in that time to represent the devil. So the real St. George was about, uh, 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 about campaigning against the oppression of early Christians. So to use the, uh, use the dragon to, uh, uh, to symbolise the, 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 uh, the fight against the devil seems very apt. So the most common version of the story was that St. George travelled to Libya uh, where he found uh, there was a, a very large lake and a dragon lived by the lake and the dragon was terrorising the country and the people had been feeding the dragon sheep to appease it and when the sheep were gone he moved on to sacrificing young maidens every day St George found that all the young girls who had now been killed and only the king, uh, the king of Egypt's daughter was left there's a flaw in here, isn't it? We're in Libya now, and it says the king of Egypt's daughter was the only one left. I'm not sure how that works, but we'll go with it. So, unless a knight could be found to slay the dragon, the princess would be sacrificed the next day. The king had promised his daughter's hand in marriage to the knight who could overcome the terrible dragon. St. George was determined to save the princess, and the next day he rode to the lake. He found the princess, he sent her back to the palace, and he approached the, approached the dragon's cave. When the dragon heard St. George's horse approaching, he came out and roared at him. The dragon was huge and its roar sounded like thunder, but St. George was not afraid. He struck the monster with his spear, but the dragon's scales were so hard that the spear simply broke into pieces. St. George fell from his horse, but he didn't give up. Instead, he rushed at the dragon and used his sword to slay it under its wing where there were no scales. The dragon fell dead at St. George's feet. But forget the myths. Christians are people who believe that the real power to overcome evil comes from the story of Jesus, his life, death and resurrection. St. George, both the real St. George and the mythical St. George, knew this too. He'd seen how strong Christians had been when, had been when facing persecution from the Roman Empire. 
When George saw God's power at work, he decided not to forget, but stay loyal to his new Lord, even though it meant death. This has impressed people ever since, and the cross of St. George has become his sign, as well as our English national flag. So, what colours do we associate with St. George? Red and white. I'm going to add green because you show me a picture book that doesn't have a green dragon, they're always green. So George is red and white and, and green and, um, and St, I can't say this, St Cyprian of Carthage, hundreds of years ago, he adopted red, white and green as the colours of martyrs. So let's, if we just move on to the next slide, Gregory. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's there, he's there, actually. There we go. <laughs> So this is, the, uh, this is clearly the, the Bible on anything to do with uh, dragons. Um, so this is uh, how to train your dragon. According to the blurb, it says, Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III is an awesome sword fighter, a dragon whisperer, and the greatest Viking hero who ever lived. But it always, wasn't always like that. In fact, in the beginning, Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III was the most put-upon Viking you'd ever seen. He wasn't loud enough to make himself heard at dinner with his father, Stoik the Vast. Not hard enough to beat his chief rival, Snotlout at Bashy Ball, the number one school sport. And certainly not stupid enough to go into a cave full of dragons to find a pet. But it was time for Hiccup to learn how to be a hero. Training the dragon, making the dragon his pet, wasn't St George's approach. He slew the dragon. The trouble with the legend is that the trouble with the legend of St George and the dragon is it leads us all to think that our task is to go around looking for dragons to slay. Dragons become a huge distraction from the point of view of martyrdom. If slaying dragons is all there is to St George, then we're stuck in a world of myths and legends and not the real St George, the world of being a disciple and a soldier of Christ. George was not called by God to be a hero, but the real George was called to be his disciple and his martyr. So, you and I, perhaps we're more like Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III, more like the real St George. We're called to be faithful servants to Jesus Christ in the real world, training our dragons to the evil, to rid the evil among us, to follow you and to do your will. The faithful servant, the disciple, is one who sees the cross of Jesus Christ as the facing down of violence and the invitation to life through, the, through life in the body of Christ. Martyrs may not be heroes, like Hiccup Horrendous. Martyrs are faithful witnesses, faithful witnesses to another way of seeing the world, faithful witnesses to the kingdom Jesus proclaimed, the kingdom amongst us, the kingdom that we pray will come. But martyrdom's a bit of a problem in our society today. It's uh, instant results are what we need. The mythical St. George is uh, more accepted than the real one. So if you go back to red, white and green, uh, St. Cyprian talked about uh, three types of martyrdom and used the colours to represent, it, represent them. The red martyr is the classic martyr, the St. George of the myths. Uh, the classic martyr who sheds blood in, uh, as a disciple of Christ. Even today, there's lots of Christians that, f that are, are the red martyrs. They face the real dragon of persecution, but it tends to look for them, not them look for it. So we have um, martyrs today trying to bear witness to Christ in Pakistan, North Korea, China, African countries, uh, where the, their faith has been su suppressed. White martyrdom... It's about self-sacrificing, compassion, and acts of charity in times of peace. And we can think of many, many examples of, uh, of, of, of saints that, uh, that, that came through that side. And St. Cypriot added in the green, and he said, this is the martyrdom of freeing oneself from evil desires by means of fasting and labor and pursuing the setting way in one's homeland. So if you set that in a, uh, in, in a current setting, then it's really about being the day-to-day -day business of being a Christian. Some, like George, are called to the red martyrdom, but we're all called to be white or green martyrs. 
since being a martyr is being one who bears the cross of Jesus. Something has happened to all of us at baptism. So, all martyrs, whatever colour we, we go for, should all prefer nothing to Christ. We see in George, not a hero, but a brother. Not a flamboyant knight in shining armour, but a faithful witness in the everyday. Someone who, like us, endures to the end. Hopefully not to death, but in his case, yes. In the words of uh, Church, of England, uh, Church of England document, the preface of Martyrs, it says, Martyrs reveals God's power made perfect in our human frailty. It then goes on to say, you choose the weak and make them strong in bearing witness to you. It does not say you choose the heroic or the strong or the eloquent. The martyr abides in Jesus as surely as Jesus abides in him or her. So if we go back to the beginning, St. George came from somewhere Palestine way. And it's, um, and how many countries uh, have, their, uh, have their patron saint from their own land? Scotland, St. Andrews was a, from the New Testament. Uh, Spain, St. James was again another New Testament character. Russia and Greece took uh, St. Nicholas and he came from Turkey. Uh, St. Patrick of Ireland, uh, he was a Brit. Uh, the French have St. Denis, he was an Italian. Uh, Germany, I don't know this, but St. Germany's um, uh, adopted saint is St. Boniface, and he was English. Uh, and then St. George, he's got the Portuguese, the Venetians, the Maltese, the Georgians, the Lithuanians, and ourselves, of course, and lots of other organisations as well. The, the one obvious example from close to home was St. David. He was about the only local patron saint we can think of that has actually came from the land he is now the patron of. So what's the message? It clearly it doesn't matter where the saint comes from. It's what he stands for that matters. The message of his life, that's what we adopt and, and, make, and why we make him our patron. St. George stands out, st stands out in one respect. His message has got absolutely nothing to do with converting people to Christianity. St. George stands for the courage to face adversity in order to defend, defend the innocent, the triumph of good over evil through courage. That's what St. George is about, and that's why he's our patron saint. So people of this church, just about on the face of St. George, may we be faithful witnesses to the crucified and risen Lord and may the flame of love that was kindled in George's heart be a flame in our lives as a community and individuals to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So let's stand and declare our faith together. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made all things? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed the world? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. So the peace of the Lord be always with you all. And also with you. And we're all still waving at each other and smiling. And now we'll join together and sing our third song, which is Cornerstone. <laughs> 
It's Stuart Duff's favourite, but he's not here. You'll have to watch it on the uh, online later. So let's uh, thank, for the, uh, thank God for the gifts that, uh, that have just been put on the altar. So, with our praise, O oh Lord, accept these gifts which we bring to you in love and gratitude and use them for the good of your church. Please sit down. And let, let us pray. Everlasting God, help us to be like the real St. George. Help us to stand up for what is right and to protect the persecuted. Let us approach the throne of God in confidence as we pray for the whole people of God in Christ and for all people according to their needs. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, 
Look down with love upon your church here in Hipplestow as day by day we struggle to be a body worthy of Jesus' name. An Easter people whose song is Alleluia. Be with the clergy and the wardens as they focus on spreading the good news as we give thanks for the resurrection of our Lord and the Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Creator God, we raise before you our world, especially praying for peace in Ukraine, reconciliation and healing in all places of war, hatred and terrorism. We pray that the nations of this world may be united and subject to the rule of the risen Christ, through whom and for whom all things we created. We pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, in this week of her birthday. May her rule be guided and influenced by the example set by your Son, who lives and reigns as King of Kings. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, your Son remained with his disciples after his resurrection, teaching them to love all their neighbours as themselves. As his disciples in Hibblestow, we offer our prayers on behalf of our community where we are privileged to live and our friends and neighbours with whom we interact day by day. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, we pray for all who are sick and for all who are in hospital, that they may be made aware that the Lord is with them in their troubles. We pray especially for Keith Portis, Pauline Gainsborough, Gary Williams, Ian Moss, Irene Wilson, Janet Anderton, Colin Betteridge, John Alex, William Sawyer, Jean Smith, Roland Thomas, Lawrence Spark, Barry Gibbs, Angela Gormley, Pat Gelsthorpe, and Keeley Thompson. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, surround all who mourn this day with your continuing compassion. Do not let grief overwhelm those who are bereaved or turn them against you. When grief seems never ending, take them one step at a time. We pray especially for the family and friends of Sylvia Riddle, Geoffrey Roberts, Edwin Burdas, and Janice Underwood. Lord, in your mercy. And Father God, you have called us to follow you. As you hear our prayers, make us faithful in responding to your call. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. So let's join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So let us rededicate ourselves to God. So, all through this week, our Father, Help us to know you better and to make you better known by doing what pleases you and giving ourselves for the service of others. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. So thank you, thank you, Father, for making yourself known to us, showing us the way of salvation through faith in your Son. We ask you now to teach us through your word so that we may be ready to serve you and spread your message by our words and actions for the glory of your Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's join together in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And let's uh, finish with our final song is at the name of Jesus.